Hi guys, and on today's video, we are at the legendary North Coast 500, which runs the whole top of Scotland. Now, for those that have been following the channel, this is something I've wanted to do for a long time. So today we'll tackle the beast. So something to bear in mind when coming to the North Coast is obviously you are in the UK, so you don't have the cost of driving into Europe. The problem with being here that I've discovered on the first 150 miles is some of the roads are terrible. I've picked up some new stone chips, definitely lots of scratches and marks are gonna be from the trip, unfortunately. When you get on some of the roads, they're great, but there's others that are just absolutely terrible. And it's also very difficult for passing. Now, most people up here so far today have been great and they've let us overtake they've pulled over and moved out of the way so we're 150 miles in and like i say we've got a couple hundred more to go so join us on this trip we depart london at around 10 a.m on the friday making our way up the motorway to glasgow which is our first stop pretty boring drive as i'm sure many of you can understand sitting on the motorway but we did see some pretty cool cars for the fast and furious fans out there and if anyone does know johnny tran let him know we found his motor So it took around eight hours all in all to get up the motorway. The traffic was relatively good. And once we arrived at Glasgow, like I say, we stopped to see some friends for a bite to eat, which was probably a bad move because having a belly full of Chinese to then do another two hours on the road did add to the pain of the journey. But once we got into Inverness, the heavens opened on us. And as you can see in this clip, we were driving about 30, 40 mile an hour in a national and it was just chucking it down. So not a great start to the trip. We thought, great, this is how the next two days are gonna unfold. But thankfully we were pleasantly surprised in the morning. So up early Saturday morning, we finally wake up to see the accommodation that my good lady had booked us. And I say when we arrived, it was pitch black and chucking it down. And it was absolutely beautiful. We had a lovely full English breakfast to start the day and made our way to the only Shell petrol station in Inverness. As you can see, a lot of it starts to open up. It's fast roads and then it can go down to really narrow stuff. So as the weather started to improve, we pulled over to set up the cameras. so much to see it's even a good experience as a passenger and in some respects it is a shame being the driver because while you're focusing so hard especially on these roads where you're constantly wary of people on the opposite side of the road sheep running out you do miss a lot of the scenery and as you can probably see from this it's absolutely beautiful we were so lucky to have the sunshine on our side and when we were booking it at the beginning of the week it looked like it was going to be rain and as i said in the previous video i was just going to have to grin and bear it because you can't really pick it especially driving this far but as i said we were so so lucky just to have clear blue skies on the saturday and the sunday and we were also really fortunate with the traffic i've got to say there wasn't a lot of people on the road only in the sort of built up areas mentioned earlier like here the views and the things you see are just nothing like London and we had plenty of opportunities to stop along the way to take pictures and we also stopped at a local little bakery had some lunch there which was really nice and just sat out looking into the views now 
The beaches as well, I mean, I wish we'd left more time for this. People had said to me, you won't be able to do it all in two days. The views over there, the places to stop, the activities to go and do. But if you're just going to drive the route, which is essentially what I wanted to do, you can do it in two days. But as mentioned, it can be busy in the peak season. So try and avoid the summer holidays if you can. Good morning everybody. So we are now on the Sunday. We departed the circuit on the Saturday and we covered 300 miles plus yesterday doing the uh, west side of the North Coast 500. Whew, it is demanding and now a lot of the roads are so tight. You've got a passing point, you've got blind corners, so you're really obviously having to keep your concentration on and you've got tourists as well, caravans, trucks, buses. It's not just car enthusiasts. You can't always hear stuff coming. But the route is fantastic. It really has been such a pleasurable drive. And as you can probably see in the background, we've been greeted by another day of sunshine. So we're going to finish the last leg today. And obviously I'll continue blogging what I can, but I seem to be killing GoPro batteries at an incredible rate. So we're struggling to get all the footage, but it is certainly enjoyable. And to have this in the UK, like so, so many people, I'm sure myself included, did Europe before even sampling this. So I'm glad I finally got it in the diary in the E46 M3 doing the route. So a lot of the route, like I say, is single file lines and there are passing points, which are really good. And the general rule of thumb is if you're holding someone up, you should let them pass. And I'd say 95% of people follow that rule, which is brilliant because the caravans will pull over, let you carry on your journey because it is a national speed limit. Now, with it being a national speed limit, it's probably the first time I've come across roads where you couldn't get anywhere near the national speed limits. There were points where we were doing 30, 40 mile an hour. And then there were sections where you're thinking, Christ, I could be doing double the limit here. The roads in some points are fantastic and then there's others, like I said in the intro of the video, that have just caused such damage to the car, scraping the undershield, stone chip. So for me, the E46, I wouldn't want this any bigger. And to be honest with you, with the tighter stuff with the SMG gearbox, I'd almost rather be in the Mrs's 240i because the box in that is an absolute peach and it'd be so much better through the tight nitty stuff. But having the car box, the carbon air box even screaming away on wide open throttle is through some of those passes as I'll drop a few of the clips in now is just incredible. So a bit of a hearsay around Scotland that you should travel with a lucky charm when you're doing the North Coast 500. That lucky charm. I am brew. 
seems to be the uh, choice sold absolutely everywhere up here whereas obviously for us southerners our london folk we don't generally drink the stuff and i've got to say i've adapted to it i've been trying to get into the scottish culture i haven't done haggis yet or anything like that but whew, it's a bit like cough mixture to be honest with you but it's been an experience like i say to add to the trip and overall just can't believe we've had this weather i mean on the run up to it it looked like rain and as i said in the previous video it's probably going to be like wales but it really just has delivered yesterday and today and i'm just so chuffed that just like the euro trip the weather stayed on our side so also another note um, probably more for those that follow the build than the actual north coast is with the 4.1 ratio diff fitted in the e46 it has been absolutely splendid every gear just feels like it's got the drive whereas i can remember in europe getting into fourth or fifth on some of the bits on the big climbs you'd be thinking oh I'll smash it down a few gears try and keep it in the power but this fourth fifth just keep rolling on the power it's been absolutely fantastic so today's leg we are going to be doing the east side of the route which doesn't look as exciting as the west side the west side is the longest part and the most tiresome but it looks like it's pretty much a straight run down so i don't think we're going to have a lot of footage today but as i said it is something that we're going to blog and hopefully give a few of you an idea of what it's like to drive the north coast 500. stopping at the beach for an ice cream which again is bizarre for september especially in scotland we made our way back now we didn't go down the a9 which is the way we came up we went past the a82 which lets us stop in at loch ness i've never been so i figured it'd be a good chance to see it and like i say the a9 is just full of average speed cameras so it made a nice fresh change and the roads are beautiful nice and winding and like i say again you could take in the scenery. The weather unfortunately did change, but we made it to our little B&B for the evening. Dashed to the bar to have the first beer of the holiday, but unfortunately made the mistake in looking for a familiar brand and went with a Carlsberg. But it still went down well after all that driving, followed by a good night's sleep. Monday morning meant it was the time to drive home. Unfortunately, just a boring run down the motorway back to London. Stopping at the services, got to see the state of the car with the weather, the brake dust. I was glad to get it home, get all the cleaning goodness on it, try and bring it back to how it was before the trip. And as I said, there is a few scuffs to the under tray, a few more stone chips. If you are gonna go with a group of you, try and be the one at the front, otherwise you're gonna end up with an absolutely battered front bumper, bonnet, wings, etc. But plenty of pictures on Instagram if you want to see more my partner who's a professional photographer has taken some wicked shots and like i say happy to report the car did it without a single fault even an smg car so we survived the mighty north coast 500 and we're now on our way back it's been an incredible couple of days and as you've probably seen from the video the scenery and the drive is absolutely brilliant if you enjoyed the video make sure you give us a subscribe and obviously if you haven't already done so check out the euro trip video and if you're interested in any more seeing the e46 m3 in action click here thanks for watching guys until next time